Hello, in this video, we want to use the parsing table that we created in our example two video and we don't create anymore. We put this input in and we'll process it, process it. After this video, you will understand what is the important difference between LL parsing and LR parsing. That being said, this is where we left off with the building of all this stuff and we will just put this in shape and end up with this one. Oh, and by the way, Make sure to read the video description if you see any unclear things or think you found some mistakes. I will correct the mistakes inside the video description because we don't have annotations in YouTube anymore. That being said, also I want to tell you that I will not re-explain a lot of stuff. So if you don't understand some of this stuff here, just make sure to watch the other videos. Anyway, no, so now let's get started. We start in state number zero. And we have, of course, the usual input still unprocessed on the right side like this. Pretty easy. And in opposition to the other video, we will, while we process this, we will build up the parsing tree here on the right side. Okay, we're in state zero. We have the input I here. So we shift S, uh, we shift four, sorry. And in our parsing tree, we got an I. Okay, we're in state four. We got the input star. So we use reduction rule number five. This is going to be a three and we changed it to an F three star rule number three. And we changed the F to a T state number two star. We don't have a reduction this time. We shift S uh, we shift six. What we added now is a star on this side six state six input I so shift four and let's go on here. Now we added an I here. State four plus reduction. So we changed the I to an F again. Eight plus again reduction. This time reduction number four. So this stuff becomes a T. And just to make to not make everything red, we will I will change the color of the pen. We now have a T and we reduced all this stuff here to a T and zero T we end up in two in state two. And now finally we apply rule number one. That means that the T gets converted to an E and maybe you remember zero one E if we would have a dollar sign now, then we would be finished, but we don't have a dollar sign. We have a plus. So we shift that. So we introduced a plus on this side five and I we shift again. So we introduced the I on this side. And now of course we don't forget the dollar sign and we need to shrink this a little bit. Just to make sure, make sure that this, that you understand that this seven and this seven, these are not related. The seven here is because we are in state five and we have a T in state five, we have a T and it's this seven, right? This is just a coincidence. Once again, we have connected all three to one T. Now it's getting more interesting in total because what happens now is that all these are going together and form an E. And now we're in state one like this and we have a dollar sign. So we are finished, it's accepted. We are at the E, so everything is fine. This is our parsing tree. And it looks a little bit cruel, so let's draw this one again in a nicer way. This is the a little bit nicer looking syntax tree, uh, sorry, parsing tree. And as you saw, we started here, then went down here like this. And went back up. We had no bigger problems doing that. All this stuff here, the arith arithmetic Precedence information was also like naturally included. By the way, let's draw the input here again in a nicer way. So what I mean is if you watch this one, then you see, oh, of course, it's obvious. The plus must go in the middle and the top and the multiplications are like going to the right and to the left. If you see that as a human, that's OK, but the computer cannot see this. Um, by the way, before we start any other explanation, we went LR, we went from the bottom up and LL would be from the top down. So 
I promised you to understand after this video that you understand the big difference why LR is so much better than LL in this case, not in every case, in this case, so much better. Because we had the in the case here that this plus needs to be in the first tree here or in the first, I don't know, when you split up, in the first splitting up thing. But the question is, if you're parsing this stuff and you start reading here and you maybe read one character ahead, then you see only I m times. You cannot see the plus. So you would try to start off with rule number four. Of course, to be honest, you would start with the E, of course. So you would start with the E here and then transfer it to uh, convert it to a T and then the T goes to T times F. And then you will convert the T to an F and the F to an I. And then you finished reading this I here. Now you are looking at the input times and you read this I and you think, oh, good, that's great. We're, we're on a good start. Then you advance by ones. You see the I and you see also the plus. So you want now something like um, I plus whatever you don't know. But you figure that the only thing that you can do is convert an F to an I. So you figure that this is not the rule that you want. So you figure you have to actually roll back all that stuff here. Now it's actually important that we have the E. And because you just used this rule, now you just try another rule, any other rule. Might be this one, might be the T. No, the T, you just used the T, sorry. Okay, let's not be too precise, but Finally, you, you have some tries and it, eventually you will come out at this point. And the important part is that you first might try this one. Then you might try this one. And then you might try this one. Why is this the case? Because you have no idea how far, how far the plus is advanced. I mean, even this tree is pretty easy because you have only one tree to the left and one tree. tree, tree. To the right and the plus is like just comes after a short while but imagine something like this the plus comes here so there, there's virtually no chance that you like look ahead like infinite signs infinite characters ahead so the only thing that you can do when you use ll parsing is that you just brute force all the possibilities so for every step here you have to like try a lot of different versions until you finally reach your goal. If you ever programmed in Prolog, then that's basically what it is. This is how LL parsing works. And the big difference to LR parsing is that in LR parsing, you don't have to do this brute force approach. You just go naturally through this graph. This is why LR parsing is so much better and I should not draw an arrow down there. And to let this information sink in, I will just finish the video right now. Thanks you very, thank you very much for watching and I make sure to read the video description. Thank you.